Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I'm acutely aware I'm between you guys and lunch, so um, I will get through this as quick as I can. Hopefully, uh, get through it so there are some questions at the end. If not, I will be around if people want to ask me questions through lunch or whatever. Okay. Um, so, in, in just a bit about um, where this came from. So, um, whilst this isn't directly li linked to benefit realisation, it picks up some of the comments people like Tony Meggs have said is about you know starting your project off right is really what makes a difference. Um, and also, people use the T word. I'm, I'm, I was conscious to delight guys uh, set up a transformation thing in policing. So, some of it is just unpicking some of that. Give you a bit of my experience about delivering major projects in government. Um, and some of the pitfalls, but some of the things that work and why they do work, um, but start to reflect as well on some of the other sort of bigger issues about how you realise some of the benefits and how you track some of those benefits, particularly when you're looking at things that are going to take years and years and years to deliver, um, but also things that are very, very hard to track. And setting yourself up at the beginning by sitting in front of a minister or a perm second saying, um, give me lots of money, I will transform your world, uh, might just set you up to fail and you actually come to think about how you're going to do it, okay? Um, I'll come back to this at the end, but um, transformation um, is changing something into something that's completely different. Um, so, uh, and change is actually just making something better. And so I'll come back to this end, but the question, if any of you do projects that have got the T word in them, just think about, is all you're actually doing making something just a bit better? Because if it is, then the way you approach that may be fundamentally different than if you're actually trying to transform something. Um, my background, as you'll see now, is pensions. So um, um, I am responsible for uh, the new state pension. So that's what I was the program director for that. So uh, you all know who to blame now when you've got to work to 67. So I to make sure my name and address isn't in that pack, is it, Neil? So uh, I know where people are. Um, so that's what I did. That's one of the big programs I delivered. We also delivered, if people remember that one, with police enrolment. Um, as in pensions, the one thing I do have is every one of you is my customer. So every one of you will, will be uh, the recipient of my product and my change. Um, the question I'd also ask yourselves is, how many of you feel transformed in the last year? Because <laughs> whether you know it or not, um, the new state pension has changed what, um, and this is why I try not to offend half the audience, uh, for those of you who are about to retire or will retire, um, so, so if I had done a transformation program, everyone in this room should feel transformed. And I can probably bet that none of you do. So that comes back to setting yourself up at the beginning to say, what are you actually trying to do? Okay? The new state pension um, could be classed as transformation. I'll take you through some of that stuff. But the pension was introduced in 1948. Uh, all we've done is change it and make it better. Uh, depending where you sit, you might think it's worse. Um, <laughs> That just goes back to the scoping bit at the beginning to saying, so if I was set out to transform pensions, then a lot of you might just think, but all you've done is just change it to make it better. And it comes down to this thing about understanding what you're trying to do before you set off, because that will really influence whether your, your ability to deliver some of this stuff and deliver the benefits as well. A bit about pensions and a bit about what we were trying to do. So um, pensions, 30 million customers, a million live abroad. We spend 100 billion pounds a year. We actually spend more on pensions than education and defence put together. Uh, you might want to think about where our priorities are, but that's the, that's the size and scale of some of this stuff. We had to change 20 I, 28 IT systems, massive welfare reform. But when you actually started thinking about what we were trying to do, we started to use words like behavioural change and culture of savings um, and things like furnace between generations. And I sat there when someone said, this is what we want you to do, and thinking, so how do you know you're going to do that? How do you know that an 18-year-old in 60 years' time, when they actually come to receive the product, will feel that they have um, furnace in what they're doing? So when you think about the challenge you get when you're a programme director and someone sticks that in front of you or in your project team and says, track these benefits, just think about actually none of us are going to be here when those when those are actually materialised, so why do we care? Why do we spend huge amounts of time coming up with very clever benefit realisation programmes when in five years' time, nobody in that programme will be around and everyone will be left anyway? So again, it starts to think about setting yourself up at the beginning 
with a chance of actually succeeding and getting through some of this stuff, okay? Um, the other thing is just think about this from the, the eyes of the user, the perspective of the user. Um, so if I said to you, um, my next change is to increase the state pension age to 70, um, and that's transformed your lives, hasn't it? <laughs> you might all sit there and say, well, from my perspective, that isn't transformational at all. And yet, from a program's perspective, we use very large words like, we're going to transform pensions. So if you put yourself in the, in the seats of the user and just think, what do they actually think is going to be transformational? Uh, I always think about people who talk about digital, so we're going to put stuff online. Um, most 20, 30 year olds now would just expect that to be what happens. And yet as a program we say, I'm going to transform this stuff, I'm going to make a website, I'm going to put it online. So who, who are you actually transforming it for? Are you transforming it for yourself? Because it's easy to get the money from the, from the, from the sponsor if you use the T word. But most people would think, well that's just making it better, isn't it? Um, and the reason why that's important is, I'll come on to the leadership styles of the way you do that. A lot of projects set themselves up thinking they're being transformational and therefore approach it in a transformational way rather than thinking actually what we're really doing is just making some of this stuff better and it's a change. And the approach you take can have a dramatic impact on the way you actually deliver those benefits. The thing that, and if people have been on the MPLA thing, like, so, so this is Cotter's uh, theory about change and the reason why I, I, I use this is because in 15 years I've never seen this wrong. Um, so the thing I ask people to think about is how many people in this pro uh, are working on a project that has a, something called a vision, a vision for change, a vision for transformation. All right. Um, how many of those projects actually start at that point? They start with let's get a lot of people in a room and create a vision, and we'll come up with a lovely uh, uh, brochure and we'll take it around the organisation. Um, and in five years' time, you'll open your filing cabinet and you'll see the lovely little picture that says this is what we were supposed to be doing. Everyone says, does everyone remember that? The reason why most projects that I've been involved with that start their fail is because they miss out the first two boxes. Uh, and, I, and I've been doing change, as I said, for 15 years. I've never yet found a, a project that has started at three that's been successful. But if you start at one and two, and you go through that process in the order it is, then your chances are you'll get to the bit at the top which is making it stick. And the key bit for me on that one is creating the urgency that creates the coalition. So in my experience when I was in, in doing state pension, I, I had a, uh, a, a, a liberal uh, minister who was probably sat there thinking, I'm now in a coalition, this is probably my one and only chance to do what I need to do. Um, and so all of a sudden you, set it, you created a bit of urgency in that programme. You created something that said, we've got to get this done in a certain time frame. But find your burning platform, because you haven't got a burning platform, then the, the people at the top aren't going to take you too seriously. Um, so we had the urgency, we had the coalition, I had ministers, I had treasurer, everybody making sure we did this. And then I went about creating a vision. Tony Meggs talked about UC. Um, so UC um, started at probably point three. It had a wonderful idea about trying to change the way uh, uh, the benefit system worked. It had an idea about trying to deliver that in five years. Uh, when it's finished, it's going to take about 12 years to deliver. Um, and one of the reasons why it took so long is because it missed out steps one and two. There wasn't an urgency to do it. And if you don't have an urgency, if you haven't got a burning platform, so when you sit in front of, of your, your sponsors or you're taking in front of your program board and they talk about let's be transformational, just try and think about, so what's going to be, what's the real driver for doing that? Why are we really trying to deliver this? Because if you can't find that urgency in burning platform, the chances are you'll go straight to a vision. And if you go straight to the vision, I've never seen a program yet in government or anywhere else that succeeded at starting at that point. The other thing to bear in mind, and particularly for me in government, and this is where this slide now is completely wrong, so, so five years was supposed to be the length of a parliament um, until Theresa May decided to change that a couple of hours ago. But the point, six years is the average length of a, of a CEO in the private industry. Um, so going back to um, when you sat there thinking about this program, if any of your programs are going to last longer than that, just think about who's actually going to be there to drive it. So who's your coalition that's going to stay around long enough to support you in that delivery? Uh, we delivered state pension in about four years. Auto enrolment was about two years. 
at UC will be over 12 years. Um, and if UC had figured that out at the beginning, that it was going to go through at least three different ministers, then you're looking at what it's trying to achieve and the benefits it's trying to deliver. Um, and there is an argument to say, you know, if you've got a project that's actually due to last more than three years, whether the first thing you should begin with is, is are we ever going to deliver this? <coughs> the 10 to 15 years is the payback. Uh, so I said UC won't deliver for 10 years. Uh, my program in state pensions uh, is going to take probably 30 years to pay back, or, or the benefits will be delivered in 30 years. Uh, so if you think about who's going to be around to track that, uh, the answer is nobody. Um, but if that's what you're relying on as the reason why you're doing your major programme, then you've really got to ask yourself, are we, are we going to set ourselves up to fail, fail here? Because at some point someone's going to pull that because they'll not wait 10 to 15 years for those benefits to be delivered. So I go back to creating the urgency again because if there's a short-term benefit you can deliver, you can find, if there's a platform that's burning, then you have a better chance of, the, of that programme sticking than if, then if you're simply going in this one with that wonderful T word that says we're going to change the culture and the transformation of this organisation. We're going to change the world. If we're going to change the world, the chances are you'll never get to that point eight because at some point someone's, someone, someone will change or something will change that will really mean you're going to struggle to deliver those benefits. I said about leadership at the beginning because um, some people may have seen things like this, which is starting to look at how you change the way major programs and major projects are delivered. And there's a notion which says um, we're very traditional project, programmatic, technical leadership delivers technical um, programs. What we need is more transform transformational, adaptive leadership because that's what delivers the transformation. So if you set yourself up to be a transformation program and you do all these things, um, but what you're actually trying to do is just make things better, when actually what you need to be is more on the other side, then what you'll probably find is you create lovely visions, but you've nothing to enable them and implement them with. And the real challenge for programmes, and particularly in government uh, and other big programmes, is how do you get that blend? Because what you actually need now is both. You need people who can think about adaptive, who can be transformational, who can think the bigger stuff, but if they don't deliver actual things that, that enable that, and it's interesting with the things like the Met Police, whatever, you know, that's about transformational police. If those cameras don't work, then actually there's no real point to it. And if, you, if you're trying to do a camera on a, on a lapel by being an adaptive leadership, you'll probably get something that is actually not very, very good. And the challenge that I've faced, and I think the challenge most people face now, is, is where are the people who can do both of those things? Or how do you create a program that can join those two things, things up successfully? Uh, if, if, if I'd approach my state pension program as an adaptive transformational leadership, we would never have delivered it. Because I would have been thinking 15, 30 years in, uh, down the line when actually what I needed to think about was a three-year program. Because without that, you couldn't deliver the other stuff as well. And that, I think, uh, going forward, if any of you are in programs that are program deliverership, Trying to be that sort of schizophrenic individual is very, very hard to do. Um, but it's the challenge, and I think a, a real challenge for, for major programmes as we go forward, to find people and individuals who can flip between the two. Um, I'm not read all this out, but um, you then get into things like agile and iterative changes. Um, so if any of you do an agile programme or involved in agile programmes, then again, just think about um, the the iterative nature of what you're doing. Uh, my experience of all of that stuff is it elongates your delivery timelines. Uh, it's supposed to make things a lot quicker. And I've yet to find a program, people know the head there, where actually doing something in an agile way is actually quicker and better than doing things in a traditional waterfall way. Now that's, that means we're probably either doing it wrong or we've listened to the consultants too much and all swallowed the wrong book. Um, but what it does say to you is, is you just need to think about your approach um, and what you're trying to deliver and how you're trying to deliver it. Um, you can't build a submarine iteratively. I thought someone said to me, you know, I can't, you, you can't dig a hole iteratively because all you do is keep filling it back in and digging it again. 
so just a few things to, to, to just leave you on. So um, uh, the, the bit we thought about was think about reform before you transform. Uh, are you ref do you need to reform things? Do you need to make them simpler before you can really change stuff? And that's what you see tried to do, but it called itself transformational. Um, think about are you just trying to make things better? Are you just trying to do big changes, but we call them transformation? You can't successfully deliver, deliver, I don't think, unless you've got the burning platform, because your burning platform gives you, so find your burning platform within your program. If you can't find one, I would seriously question whether, A, why you're doing it, and B, are you going to be successful? Um, if you can find some pound signs, particularly in government, that Treasury and other people are really interested in, then that will give you at least a starting point to deliver something that you've got a fighting chance of doing. Um, the best bit of advice anyone ever gave me was, you can only ever change three things, people, processes and technology. Uh, if you try and change one, you'll be successful. If you try and change two, you might be there. If you try and change three, you'll fail. And I've yet to find a programme, certainly that, that I know of, that has attempted to change all three and has actually been successful. Because one of, those, one of the, the other ones is the thing that stops the other two working. Um, and the last bit, which goes back to my previous question, is, is transformation retrospective? So when you guys all retire, you might look back and say, what Ian Clark did was the most transformational thing in the world. But if you sit here today and ask you that same question, it says, do you feel transformed? None of you will probably put your hands up. So in, in scoping your projects and I'm going to transform state pension, you guys are all my customers. If, I, if you are my benefits, I probably find that I've actually failed because none of you feel transformed but I set a project up to do that. So again, just thinking about that in terms of what you set out to do. So, you know, change is a measurable difference. So, you know, uh, putting things digital, making them bigger, is just, some, just doing the same thing better. And a lot of people, I find, kid themselves into thinking, I'm actually, I'm being transformational, when all you're actually doing is doing what you're doing now just a little bit better.